SETI, S-E-T-I, stands for the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. It's a word that describes a wide variety of different kinds of searches which are being made all over the world for evidence of the existence of other civilizations in space. Almost all of the searches that are being done are being done with radio telescopes. Our goal is to detect in those searches radio, radar transmissions from other civilizations. The first result come from this is simply the knowledge that other civilizations exist in space. That, of course, would be an enormous milestone in the history of human civilization. Why do we search? It is because everything we know about our universe, about our planetary system, and about the origin and evolution of life on Earth seems to say that all of these things were the result of completely normal processes that occur in our galaxy. No special phenomena, no freak events were required for our civilization to exist as it does. Given the enormous number of stars in our galaxy, which are like the sun, it follows that there should be many, many civilizations in our galaxy and in other galaxies. If they practice technology as we do, they, have, they are detected. This is a recent development. Until a few decades ago, our instruments were not sensitive enough to detect reasonable manifestations of intelligent life. That is, they could not detect the same sorts of signals and power levels that we ourselves radiate. However, if we have crossed the important threshold in that we have developed instruments which can detect signals much stronger than we radiate across the vast distances which separate the stars. In fact, our present radio telescopes, if used properly, can detect Earth-like signals all the way from the far side of the galaxy. Therefore, it is reasonable to search. There would be an enormous intellectual uh, payoff in the detection of other civilizations. Their mere existence is a very important fact, which will influence our thinking, our philosophy, our outlook on life. We will learn almost certainly facts of science, evolution, biology, and other places we could not learn by any other means. We would see what uh, prospects there are for the future of civilizations, what becomes of them, uh, how do they manage their resources, what ways of life do they adopt. All of these things are interesting in their own right. At the same time, they may provide very useful information in developing their own resources or planning their own activities. How can that system formation says that some of the planets in these systems will be similar to the Earth, and there's now been a multitude of experiments conducted on the chemistry laboratories here on Earth, which show that where you have a planet like the Earth, the chemistry of life develops quite spontaneously and with vigor. It does not require any special circumstances for the first steps in life. Uh, we have not traced as yet the development of the first. 
first true human living thing to reproduce the destruction of molecules of life, but not the first living thing. But we are close to that. And again, there doesn't seem to be any special <coughs> circumstances required to give rise to the living thing. Now, once you have living things, they compete for resources, food, ecological emissions, and this is the driver for, the, uh, for evolution to proceed. And so the picture is one where surely very complicated organisms will develop. One idea which is large is that we want to tell the other civilization the special things about us and our system. We need not tell them basic science or mathematics. They know all that. So it's silly to tell them what the value of pi is or what the structure of the carbon atom is or something like that. They know all that. Uh, we're not sure that they know what our biology is. It's, it's possible that our basic biology, the system of proteins and DNA, is universal, but we don't know that. Uh, if it isn't, then it's very interesting to them because it's an extremely effective way to make a living thing. Uh, so in any case, in designing the Arecibo message and other messages, we've always tried to put in only those things which are special and we think perhaps unique to us. Uh, to describe most of those things, you have to describe things in numbers. Quantities count. So that in most of the messages, the very basic part is to establish a number system so that you can tell them things in numbers. Uh, for example, in the uh, Arecibo message, uh, we thought it desirable to describe the structure of DNA. And to do that, you have to give a chemical formula give the chemical formula, you have to give the numbers of carbon atoms and hydrogen and oxygen, whatever, the molecules, so you need numbers. Uh, we also thought they would be interested in knowing how many there are of us. So again, you need to give a number, give our size. So <clears throat> that's why it's very desirable, it's essentially desirable, 